Okay guys, welcome back to the RIP Power Series on the 2020 Dodge Durango. We are excited because we are coming to a close on a series that we were doing here. So you watch this uh, car come in at 202, naturally aspirated. That is the wheel horsepower, and I'll explain this graph here in a moment. And then you watched it make 238 horsepower at the wheels when we did the coil and the catch can there. And that was fantastic. So that's already a lot of fun. There's a good gain there, right? And now you're looking at this number right here, 394. Well, that's with this supercharger. So uh, why is this project so important to us? The Durango community has been reaching out to us quite a bit, you know? And so we hear them. And so we had to get past some of the other programs and this one was important to us so we wanted a vehicle in house to make sure that we get it just right and and why is that well if we talk about the horsepower first of all right 394 horsepower that's srt power right and i want to talk about power before we get crazy the idea of horsepower and the way we are demonstrating it to here you know here to you now is at the wheels that's like real world horsepower all-wheel drive so we have the vehicle in all-wheel drive like you drive it down the street you know we mat it and we're testing it uh, the way the manufacturer advertises horsepower is at the crank, and that's the bigger number you see. So when you say my car has like, you know, 285 horsepower, 300 horsepower, because I have this sort of dual exhaust, I get it. But when you put it on a machine, this really expensive one, uh, it makes less. So before you go tap it in, uh, please uh, understand the way that works. There's a percentage loss there. And that's, uh, that's common throughout the industry, and you can kind of look that up, and that's the way we're demonstrating here. So 202 is actually what you're driving around, even though it's actually 304 at the crank. That's before the car is around it. So, you know, just go check that information out. There's plenty of people explaining it. Now, I, I want to touch a little bit more on this graph. So this red line here, that represents the car stock. So that's right, that's the low horsepower, 202 horsepower, and then these two here. So this higher number is the vehicle cold. So that's the best, you know, you're going to get out of the car when it's cold, you know, up to temperature, but a cool run. And then there's a 10 to, to 15 horsepower drop in this blue line, which is when the car's warm. So that's basically where the car's going to be. But you have a 390 horsepower car, basically. Right, so the graphs here, you know, clearly you got this big number, and that's if you're floored and you bring it all the way to red line, and that's common when you're trying to go around somebody. But all this mid-range and all this low uh, RPM is where, you know, the car spends a lot of its time. If you were to just drive the car, you know, and notice, you know, the car's really quiet, so you don't even see the tack. A lot of people don't even look at it. But if you take a moment to sort of drive the car and take a look at, you know, the RPM, you'll see that your car spends a lot of time in this three to 3,500 RPM passing people, and it's, it'll sit down at 25. Now, you can't test the car at those low RPMs on a dyno because you have to sort of lock up the converter and it's very difficult to do those tests. This, these machines don't do that. But when you're driving down the road, this is basically what we're showing you here, okay? So it's very important for you to understand that, you know, if you're following this OEM track, the car, you have to always dig into the gas to try to get the car to make more power. And you're constantly going higher and higher, 4,000 RPM to get the power out of the car. With the blower, you immediately have 25, 30 more horsepower, even at those part throttle RPMs. And that's where, you know, we spend a lot of time driving these cars. You know, I, I have a 2020 Grand Cherokee, uh, and it, you know, we, we drive it back and forth to work every day. Uh, and uh, my wife will take it, you know, with the kids or, you know, put the dogs in it and drive it. And so that's really where the car spends its time. That's where we're able to get better gas mileage. Because when you're leaning on the compressor for power, right, it only needs one or two pounds of boost. It's, it's unlike other modifications which hit the engine really hard with boost. Uh, so it's, it's a big reason why we use centrifugal type superchargers. Centrifugal superchargers are very linear in power delivery. That means uh, they're very predictable and there's no surprises. Unlike let's say a turbocharger system where you step on it and pressures can, are controlled by multiple valves and they can sort of like lag or they can sort of uh, peak and overboost. Uh, and, and that's where people start talking about you know, the curve and the efficiency and all that and we get it. But that's not what we're building here. Right? We want the vehicle to be more usable, have more power, okay? So when we start talking about V8 power out of your V6, we actually mean it because it's acting like a much larger engine. You could see that your torque line here is very, very linear and straight, and that's really how a V8 would work. It would have, you know, sort of a higher curve, you know, in the beginning because it's got a lot of weight from that rotating assembly, and then it'll come across and deliver power. So we want to talk about towing because people tow with these vehicles. Um, you know, maybe once or twice a year you might be putting a boat in or a boat out or you have a camper or some dirt bikes. You're going to go have some fun. And uh, again, this mid-range power is where you spend a lot of your time. And you find yourself digging into the throttle to get the power because the only power adder you have is fuel. But when you have a compressor, you have boost. The boost will then, you know, assist the engine in making more power, and then therefore you'll get down the road a lot easier. So if you're going up, you know, a mountain climb or a grade, for example, you'll see that that'll be a lot easier to use. So we take a lot of time to make sure that the mapping works there as well. 
what does that all mean for you as an end user? You have one mod that doubles the power of the engine, makes it feel like a V8. We've proven it to be very simple uh, to install. It only goes in, in in a few hours. You know, installation is meant to be eight hours. Uh, it, it, there's no modifications to the vehicle, so you're not like cutting the car or you know putting holes in the oil pan or things of that nature. Uh, so the the idea of the RIP supercharger is minimally impact you know, the engine, but maximum fun in our quest of product development, right? We want you to enjoy the product. And that's what this kit does. So we have some links, you know, in the description that uh, sort of back up some of our horsepower passes, right, in the, in the 392 and the 57s and, you know, naturally aspirated and all that other stuff. So you can go check those out. We've probably had more of these vehicles on a dyno than all of our competitors combined. So you can probably check that out. There's hundreds of videos of us testing these vehicles and having very consistent results. And uh, additionally, you know, you have any questions, you could put that in the comments down below or, you know, check us out on ripmods.com, Facebook, Instagram, or just give us a call because we pick up the phone. Thanks, guys.